right, let's uh, work through these together. I'm going to get out your quest and uh, reference these problems as I work through them. All right, this one says find the difference. The difference is just when we take one thing and we subtract another thing. So the difference of 8 and 7 is 1. All right, and we're going to find the difference of this polynomial and this polynomial. Uh, but before I can really do that, I have to say, well, I'm subtracting this polynomial. There's essentially a negative 1 being multiplied by this polynomial, so we need to distribute that negative 1. Right? That's what it means to subtract this polynomial, to subtract this, subtract this, subtract this, subtract all of it. Okay. So we have negative 2p to the fourth minus 3p cubed, just recreating exactly the first parentheses because there's nothing acting on the parentheses. Parentheses is grouping this thing together, but I don't have to multiply it by anything, I don't have to raise it to a power, I don't have to divide it by anything, there's nothing going on here. But I do need to distribute this negative 1 to this polynomial, and I get plus 9p cubed minus 8p squared plus 6p. And now I just collect like terms. I have only 1p to the fourth term, so that's it. All right, the third, there's another one, so negative 3, positive 9, that's a positive 6p to the third. And it's a square, there's a square, 6 minus 8, that's a negative 2p squared. Uh, p and p, we got a negative 2p. We have no constants, no numbers, uh, so that's it. All right, we're going to solve this equation. Remember that what we have here is one number times another number equals zero. There is no way that I could ever multiply two numbers together and get zero unless this was zero, right? This could be anything. Zero times anything is zero. Or this is zero, and then whatever this is, it doesn't matter. Zero times anything is zero. Okay? This is the only way that that can happen, so that's why we always say x plus 1 equals zero, or 11x plus 4 equals 0. If we set up both of those equations, one of them has to be true. If neither one of these is true, this wouldn't be true. It is not possible that this is, uh, you know, that, that this is 7 and that this is 5. 7 times 5 is not 0. The only two numbers that could multiply together and get 0 uh, is a, a pair of numbers such that one of them is 0. One of them has to be 0. If this one is 0, then x would be negative 1. If this one was 0, well, let's figure out what x is. We subtract 4 from both sides, then we divide by 11, negative 4 over 11. So x equals negative 1, x equals negative 4 over 11. Number 3, we want to find the product. We're going to multiply these together, so we're going to distribute this x. This, is, of course, is a shortcut. We're kind of... Uh, lying a little bit when we do this, but we know that if we were to distribute this x plus 5 to here, here, and here, all we wind up doing is multiplying both of these, x and 5, by everything in here. Okay, So as long as we pair everything up, every possible pair, multiply them together and collect like terms, we've got it. So we have x to the third, just distributing the x right now, minus 2x squared plus 3x. Now for the 5, 5x squared plus 5x squared uh, minus 10x uh, and plus 15. Let me distribute. Let me collect like terms if possible. x cubed. We got some uh, x squared here, so uh, plus 3x squared. A 3x and a negative 10x. x and negative 7x. And then we have a 15. It's the only number around. It's just 15. No other numbers to combine with it. So there we go. Solve this equation. Remember it, that. Something equaling 0 is very important in solving these polynomial equations, so we add 12x to both sides. And we get 2x squared plus 12x equals 0. Okay, uh, then we factor the left side. Uh, job number one in factoring is finding do they have any factors in common? Uh, and if so, find the largest factor and take it out. So the largest factor they have in common is 2x. That leaves us with x plus 6. Try it yourself. Multiply 2x by x plus 6. You'll get 2x squared plus 12x. Now again, this number or this number have to be 0. So either x is 0, we divide by 2 on both sides, or x is negative 6, we subtract 6 on both sides. So that's what I'd put here. 0, x equals negative 6. All right, next page. 
All right, remember that squaring something means multiplying it by itself. 2 squared means 2 times 2. 4 squared means 4 times 4. 8 squared means 8 times 8. 6x squared minus 2 squared means 6x squared minus 2 times 6x squared minus 2. When we write it out that way, we can see we just need to distribute the 6x squared. That doesn't quite look right. There we go. We need to distribute the negative 2 and then collect like terms. So we get 36x to the fourth when we multiply these together. And then for 6x squared times negative 2, that's negative 12x squared. We do go to the negative 2 now. We get another negative 12x squared. Not too surprising. These two things are identical, so you'd think we'd get some doubles and some stuff. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Collect like terms. We wind up with 36x to the fourth minus 24x squared plus 4. A little too far there. x squared plus 11x plus 4. Okay, so we know that it's going to break down into factors like this. x times x is x squared. Then we need these two numbers we're going to fill in. They're going to multiply together when we, if we were to distribute, uh, if we were to check it out, they would multiply together to make 24. But they would also both get multiplied by an x in the distributing process. And we'd have two x terms, and we'd collect those like terms to get 11x. So two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11. Two positive numbers. They multiply to a positive, add to a positive. Uh, and let's see, 6 and 4. No, that adds to 10. 8 and 3. 8 and 3. 8 times 3 is 24. If we were to multiply it out, we'd get 8x. We'd get 3x. That adds to 11x. So that's my final answer. Back to the polynomial. Uh, first, we're going to look for any common factors that they all have. Uh, factor of 3, this doesn't have a factor of 3. So the number factors aren't going to work out. Let's see, x, and these all have x's, but this doesn't have an x factor, so that's not going to factor out. Uh, so, you know, priority one in factoring, factoring in a common factor, there aren't any common factors. But there are four terms. Remember, I said four terms uh, is a prime candidate for factoring by grouping. And in fact, at this stage, it's the only way we're going to be able to factor. Uh, more than three terms. Okay, if there's four terms, if, if we're going to be able to factor, it's going to be by factoring by grouping. It's the only way. So we look at this group and we say, what do they have in common? They have an x squared in common. What are we left with? 3x plus 5. All right. And remember what we have here is a group. I'll, I'll even use parentheses. This group plus this group including the sign in front of the 12, the negative 12 there. Okay, so what we have next is a plus whatever comes next. So the thing I'm doing here is trying to remind you that it, this stuff is not going to be multiplied by the next group. It's added to the next group, okay? So what do we have in common here? We have a, a negative 4 in common. That leaves us with 3x plus 5. No surprise there. Negative 4 times 3, negative 12. Or negative 4 times 3x, negative 12x. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 12, or negative 20. So we have one, two terms now, just like we had two terms here, we had two terms here. These two terms have a 3x plus 5 in common. We factor out that 3x plus 5, and we're left with x squared minus 4. But then we notice x squared minus 4, maybe we can factor that. Indeed, it is a difference of squares which we talked about before I handed out the quests. Reminded you to look out for that difference of squares, x plus 2 times x minus 2. So that would be the final answer. All right, this guy here, we're going to factor it. Uh, very similar to one we did just a minute ago. Uh, we need an x times an x to give us the x squared. We need two numbers that multiply to positive 20, add to negative 9. Uh, so we need two negative numbers. 5 and 4 will do the job. 5 times 4 is 20, and negative 5x, negative 4x, add up to negative 9x. Okay, now we're going to solve this equation. It's equal to 0, so we're happy about that. We don't have to do anything like uh, I was on the previous page, right, where we had to add 12x to both sides, so that we had 0 on one side. That's already taken care of. It's already equal to 0, so now we're going to factor this side. Uh, very similar to the one that we just got finished with, number 8. Uh, it's just going to be two numbers that multiply to 108 and add to negative 21, so two negative numbers. Right? Do a little searching, a little poking and prodding, uh, a little bit of guess and check, and find that 9 and 12 do the job. 9 times 12 is 108, 
and negative 9x minus 12x will give us negative 21x. And remember, this is all equal to 0. Don't forget that we're solving this equation. We're not trying to just factor this. We're trying to solve the equation. So either x minus 9 equals 0, or x minus 12 equals 0. So x equals 9, or x equals 12. Those are our two answers. So that's what we put here. Okay. And last page. We're going to solve this equation. So the first thing that we're going to do, since it's already equal to 0, Let's factor out anything it has in common. So these all have a 3 in common. In fact, we don't have to like factor it out and leave it there. We could, we could do this. Since it's an equation, we could divide both sides by 3. We can divide this by 3, this by 3, this by 3. We get 2x squared plus 9x minus 5 equals 0, because 0 divided by 3 is 0. So that's nice. Um, OK, so what do we do now? we got 2x squared plus 9x minus 5. Remember, we have a something in front of x squared that is not a 1. Let's uh, use factoring by grouping. And this is how we do that. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Just organizing the, uh, the work here. Two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to 9. OK, that looks like a positive 10 and a negative 1. That would do the job. So 2x squared plus 10x minus 1x minus 5 equals 0. And we group. These two have a 2x in common, 2x times x plus 5. And these have a negative 1 in common, x plus 5 is left. They both have a factor of x plus 5. We're left with 2x minus 1 equals 0. x plus 5 equals 0, or 2x minus 1 equals 0 x equals negative 5. Let's add 1 to both sides on this one. Divide by 2. There we go. x equals negative 5. x equals 1 half. All right, here we go. Look for anything that they have in common as we begin to factor this out. But they don't have anything in common. They don't have a 2 in common. So they definitely don't have a 4 in common. So we just go straight to factoring by grouping. 4 times 4 is 16. Two numbers that multiply to 16 add to negative 17. How about negative 1 and negative 16? So 4x squared minus 16x minus x plus 4. We group. We get a 4x in common here, leaving x minus 4. Uh, we get a negative 1 in common here, leaving x minus 4. So that gives us x minus 4 times 4x minus 1. OK, we're solving this equation, so we need to figure out what x is. It's equal to 0, so we're happy. Then we factor the left side. First thing we do is find a common factor. They all have an x, so that makes things easier. x squared minus x minus 30 still equal to 0. Then we can factor this as x minus 6 times x plus 5. Still some more work to do here. Either this is 0, or this is 0, or this is 0, because remember, we're multiplying this times this times this. The only way we could multiply these three things together and get 0 is if this guy is 0, the first one is 0, or x minus 6 is 0, or x plus 5 is 0. So that's done. Right? We could just throw that right there. Add 6 to both sides, x equals 6. Subtract 5 from both sides, x equals negative 5. Last one, factor this guy, it's got four terms, as I mentioned earlier. Factoring by grouping is the only way we're going to be able to do this. So these two have, uh, oh, actually, the first thing we want to do is we see among all of these terms is they all have an x. So we factor out that x. And so we're left with 9. Uh, they don't have anything else in common, like a 3 or a 2 or something. 9x to the 6th minus 15x to the 4th plus 12x squared minus 20. All right, now we factor by grouping here. Uh, inside the parentheses, we have these two have a 3x to the fourth in common. Leaves us with 3x squared minus a 5. These two have a 4 in common, leaving us with 3x squared minus 5. All right, so we have an x out here. These two have a 3x squared minus 5 in common. And that leaves a 3x to the fourth plus 4 behind. Okay. If we were to distribute this 3x squared minus 5 to both of these terms, we would wind up with 3x to the fourth times the parentheses 
plus four times the parentheses as well. So just that's just a double check to make sure you've done it correctly. All right, so there it is. The factor as factored as it can possibly get uh, form of this polynomial. And that was the last one. So uh, just a quick note about a, like a common mistake. It, it happens a lot. Uh, seems every year. Look at a problem like this one, uh, or maybe an, an easier one to talk about at least. Uh, like this one. I'll get a final answer sometimes of x equals negative 8, x equals negative 3. It is impossible to know this. You cannot know that x has to be negative 8 or x equals negative 3. You're confusing it with an equation where it's equal to 0, but it's not equal to 0. Nobody's saying it's equal to 0. Nobody knows in the entire universe what this is equal to. Could be equal to 1, could be equal to 7, could be equal to 12. It's not equal to anything. Since we don't know what I'm supposed to get when we multiply, these two together, we can't say that the necessary step x plus 8 equals 0 or that x plus 3 equals 0. We don't know that. We don't know that the other side of this equation is 0. It's not an equation. There is no other side. I, I think I'm probably beating a dead horse now. I think you get it. There's no equation. It's not equal to anything. So there's a difference between factoring and solving. Here, we can't say what x is, but we can factor it. Here, we use factoring to solve the equation be able to say that definitely x is 9 or x is 12. And that is all. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.